Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, dust collection on the cheap. So I'm in the process of moving to a new shop and part of the program in the new shop is going to be to upgrade and improve the dust collection system you know, over what I had with my belt grinders in the old shop. So today I'm going head to head with two relatively different inexpensive dust collection nozzles and hose fittings. I'm not going to talk about the entire dust collection system, just the part that actually gathers up the dust and sucks it off into oblivion. So it's this gizmo, the PowerTech at 25 bucks on Amazon against the somewhat more expensive lock line system, about 50 bucks from Granger. Now, look, let me be honest up front so I don't waste your time. As a general rule in my videos, I like to show solid results, clear conclusions, you really give you something to take away. That's not exactly the point here. Today, I'm more showing you a process that I'm going through and you get to see some intermediate stage conclusions. Final judgments will come in future videos, but trust me, if you're you know, trying to learn more about dust collection in your shop, you will learn some good stuff in this video. Okay, nobody wants to spend tons of money on a ventilation system. Dust collectors don't make knives. So I want an effective system, yes, but cheap. Can I pull that off? Well, today's goal is to sort of move me in that direction, uh, not just to test these specific components, but it's also sort of a proof of concept to see if using plastic hoses for belt grinders is just a totally dumb idea or not. Before I get to the good part, let me talk a little bit about dust collection and belt grinders. Here's the challenge with collecting grinder dust. If you just had one setup on a grinder that never changed, a wheel or a platen, say, then dust collection's easy. You can just use a bunch of galvanized air conditioning ductwork from the home improvement store and make a fixed setup. Bolt it on, leave it there. Easy and cheap. But if you have a pro grinder like these, they'll have a bunch of arms with different grinding attachments. And each attachment or wheel is in a different place and throws all its dust and sparks in a different place. So ideally you want a system where you can move the collection nozzle quickly, simply, and accurately every time you change your arms. Trust me, it's easier said than done. You know, I've seen some guys with really baroque, complex setups that look like they probably took a week to fabricate. Not interested. I want something that's smart, cheap, and really easy to set up. Alrighty then, let's look at the contenders. Here is the cheapest of the cheap. This whole kit, the PowerTech 70208, a hose, two nozzles, and some adapters, cost about 25 bucks. The way it works is that you extend the ends of the hose and screw it in these little two and a half inch adapters. Those adapters are then compatible with most shop vacs. And yeah, that's it. You stick the dust collection nozzle on one end and the adapter in the other, and then you can pull the hose out to whatever length you need. It articulates and freezes in whatever position you want. Freezing being a somewhat impressionistic term. So contender number two, the lock line system. It's made from a bunch of separate segments that snap together. You can make the hose any length you want by buying additional pieces and just jamming them together. They say snap, I say jam, take some muscle. This kit comes with 18 of the little segments which gives you about two and a half feet of hose. I also got some connectors and adapters. I spent 50 bucks not including this little gate, which is not really part of the test. So for this test, I'm not using any fancy dust collection system, just a good old shop vac. So in order to get my two and a half inch shop vac hose connected to either of these systems, I needed this piece, which you can buy in a $9 adapter kit from Home Depot. I then used a two inch conduit bracket, 97 cents at Home Depot, to attach the bracket to something rigid enough to support the hose. That's about it. Everything else is downstream in the shop back system, so we're not going to worry about that. So, first, the lock line. The pieces are pretty tightly fitted, so like I said, assembling them requires a little persuasion. 
But the result of this tightness, though, is that everything feels very rigid and controllable. The dust collector nozzle can be articulated through a wide range of motion, and when you get it somewhere, it stays there. Very little wobbling or rebounding. So, let's fire it up and see what happens. Like I said, the rectangular nozzle is pretty easy to position in the line of sparks, and is big enough that the majority of dust particles seem to get swallowed right up. Okay, so you may have noticed this sucker is plastic. Plastic and fire, as we all know, don't play nice together. So let's torture test it a little. I'll grind steadily for five solid minutes and see what happens. Okay, there we go. Grinding and grinding. Bear in mind, when I'm grinding a knife, I never just blast away for five minutes straight like this. You're always stopping to check the grind, cool the blade in water, whatever. But I'm trying to do this in as sustained way as possible and just see what an extreme case does. Grinding, grinding, grinding. Okay, done. The result? Well, the hose gets pretty toasty right here where the bend is situated. It's obvious the sparks are having some effect, but there's no melting, no smoke, no sagging. I can't smell anything bad. And there's certainly no giant plume of flame, so no obvious problems here. On the other hand, you can see a few particles welding to the inside of the hose. Over time, this will constrict the flow of air. Also, if you've used grinding ventilation gear before, you'll know that sometimes when a big pile of metal shavings accumulates in the hose, it can ignite and it creates quite a bit of heat, probably enough to melt this hose. Maybe enough to set your shop on fire. Hmm, something to think on, be warned. Believe me, I'm going to be testing this further over time to see if that happens, and I'm going to be very careful about it, but so far so good. Incidentally, I checked later and found that all the pieces are made from acetal, the trade name for which is Delrin. That's one of the most durable and temperature-resistant plastics on the market. It's got a melting point of about 350 Fahrenheit, which is much higher than thermoplastics like PVC. One thing I will say, though, I would not consider using this with titanium. If you've ever ground titanium, it sparks super hot, and I wouldn't be shocked if, under sustained use, you'd have a puddle of plastic on the floor. Okay, turning to the PowerTech system. First thing you'll notice is that it's uh, floppy. I won't make any off-color analogies, but I'm sure you can supply them for yourself. I'm able to get it into the stream of sparks eventually, but it really takes a lot more fussing than the lock line, and it just doesn't seem to hold a position very well. So let's crank it up here, and then... Okay, it just starts slumping. I was planning to test it out a little bit here, and then do a five minute torture test like I did with the lock line, but I see there's no point here. It clearly wouldn't last a minute under a sustained barrage of sparks. It's pretty much just melting. In fact, not even pretty much. Further inspection reveals that in a matter of seconds, we've melted slap through the hose. So, total fail here. Now, look, in fairness, this product was totally intended for woodworking. You know, my hope here was that I could do something on the cheap, Maybe this would serve the purpose for metalworking, but apparently I was just dreaming. As a metalworking tool, sorry, this is garbage. Just out of curiosity, I tried it on my CNC machine. The same flaws that revealed themselves on the grinder are still in evidence. It's just too hard to position precisely, so this happens. I mean, I guess I'll try it out on my bandsaw and see if it's of any value there, but honestly, I'm not hopeful. I'm not even really sure this is going to be useful for woodworking. So, circling back, is using plastic hoses just a completely dumb idea? Look, this really is just a test run. Like I said it, you know, at the top of the video, my plan is to completely update my entire grinding collection system, uh, grinding dust collection system, and I want to test out a whole bunch of stuff. So. When that's complete, I'll show you the fruits of my labors and you can see where I've finally landed. But what I can say about the lock line is it's definitely made the cut to go into the next phase of testing. I plan to buy another one. I'll put it on my second grinder. I'll run both of them for a few months and we'll see how they do. But so far, I'm cautiously optimistic. That said, as the test with PowerTech clearly shows, 
If you're gonna mix plastic and fire, you wanna be very, very cautious. If you have any experience with this approach, by all means, leave a comment below. I'll be getting back to you with the results of my tests of the lock line system and a bunch of the other things that I'm doing uh, in this general realm of dust collection in a few months. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years. So I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com